Alrighty then. Now that I've given you two videos to um, preview what I intend to do, and I promised you the Kasparov games, the one that I was interested in showing you first was the one that was on that list that I showed you about the PGN files. This is the Kasparov PGN folder file. Uh, and I, I just want to say that I have always had a problem with what they're calling the Sicilian defense. So, and by the way, I was able to, like I promised you, I was able to get this font uh, larger so you can see it. And of course, as always, please watch this in a high definition so that you can see this uh, um, fine print. So in any case, the Sicilian defense, and, and Kasparov is playing black here. So, I, I want to show you a game that he actually lost. I mean, Kasparov was absolutely one of the best. Um, he certainly uh, retired from chess as a grandmaster, as, as a champion. But, what better way to figure out how to play against an opening that you don't know how to play against? except to see a, a, a champion like Harry Kasparov lose by playing it. So uh, it's this the Sicilian defense I don't know I don't know openings by names. Um, Sicilian defense is always denoted by the blacks C5 pawn as you can see. that's uh, uh, apparently that's already considered the, the Sicilian defense. So I've played against the chess Titans from Microsoft. And every time it does that to me, because I always open up with the king pawn myself, you know. So I'm doing basically what uh, what's his name Chandler, Murray Chandler, Chandler. I'm basically doing what he what what uh, um, I always do what he does. I always open up with my my king pawn, and many times Chess Titans always gives me the Sicilian defense against it, and I and I always have problem with it. I never know how to play against it. Well, here uh, Murray Chandler beats Garrett Kasparov and Garrett Kasparov is using that C5 Sicilian defense so let's see what was done to be able to beat Garrett Kasparov now this was of course 1976 I believe if you look on the right side of the screen here it's the world championship that's what the WCH stands for I think the U is the Ukraine I don't know how to pronounce this province, town, or whatever they call it there, Wattingness, Wattingness, <laughs> excuse me, any case, uh, it is the World Championship of 1976, back in August of 1976, so here it is, what does Chandler do to be able to defeat Garrett Kasparov using the Sicilian defense, so I never thought of doing this, I always felt that this blocks off my knight. But who am I to argue with somebody who beat Gary Kasparov? Gary attacks the pawn. I'm going to go through some of these first moves quickly. And here's something I never did. <clears throat> uh, Chandler apparently attacked the knight immediately. Okay. Gary Kasparov moves the knight. Then... I see the wisdom. After the first few moves, after Chandler moves the C pawn, the C3, against the Sicilian, and the Gary puts the knight out, and Chandler attacks the knight, and Gary moves the knight, Chandler pushes his D pawn, D4. Now this is interesting because you get this here nice chain here, but of course it's being attacked by this pawn. So let's see what happens next. Now, apparently Gary Kasparov did not take the pawn, but he instead, which I think is probably a good idea, I mean, who might argue with Gary Kasparov, uh, attacked the pawn twice now. Okay. Chandler defends that same pawn. Gary now takes it anyway. <clears throat> so... Here's the question. What do you take that pawn with? You can take back. I think some of the mistakes I usually make is that I sometimes take it with the knight. 
where Chandler takes it with the pawn. Now, what does this do? Um, I'm learning here. And I'm going to try this against Chess Titans, but uh, I don't think Chess Titans is going to make the same moves uh, in return. But uh, taking it with the pawn leaves Chandler with a nice pawn center, two pawns in the middle. And this pawn is defended by his knight and his queen. So let's see what Gary does. Gary puts the e pawn out, which I have no idea, except maybe to release the bishop. I think you know I, I I'm not I'm not an expert but I, I played enough chess to think that uh, I know why Chandler would move this rook pawn I uh, imagine that either one of these Knights of Gary's could move to this square e, uh, b4 and this is a what they call a prophylactic move so that uh, it prevents Gary Kasparov from moving his Knights there I don't know why Gary moved that pawn there. Your guess is as good as mine. Why would he move d6? What does he see? Let's look at this for a minute. Give you a few seconds. I don't know. I mean, it, it, it literally blocks his bishop in. So maybe that's why he lost the game. Maybe he made his bishops weak. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe in your comments you can you can give me some ideas as to why Gary might have done that. Maybe just simply attack the pawn center just to get rid of that. Bishop d3 is something I don't always do. In fact... If I was playing this game, I would have been enticed to move it to b5 to pin the knight. But maybe I should start thinking as Chandler thinks. I mean, he did beat Gary after all. <clears throat> Again, I don't, I don't know. Maybe somebody out there can tell me the logic. Again, certainly, uh, certainly Chandler had reasons to move it there, and uh, he beat Gary in this game. So, hmm. well, maybe because maybe because uh, Chandler already knows that Gary can't really move the knights anywhere because they're they're basically, they're, I mean, Gary has a good position with the knights, but they're being stopped from being uh, deployed over here so maybe uh, Chandler didn't see the need to pin a knight that was already in kind of stuck position sounds good to me <laughs> okay let's let's move on with this game so uh, Gary Kasparov pulls out the Queen early puts uh, Chandler in check uh, Chandler comes out with the Bishop attacking the Queen causing Gary Kasparov to retreat, moving the queen twice. I don't know what that does. Hmm. Well, let's just, you know, I'm going to try to talk a little less. That's weird. See, now, if I was playing chess titans, and I moved my knight out here in this sort of position... I would have expected chess titans to immediately take my pawn. And, and I think it would have. So why didn't Gary do that? Why did he trade knights instead? Maybe he figured uh, his knights were stuck. So maybe he wanted to trade off his stuck knight for another knight. So which, which piece does Chandler take back with? Now... Uh, I'm, I'm looking at Chandler's way of playing, and I'm thinking that it would be... Um, I mean, I could see the moves here, obviously. He takes it with uh, the bishop, but I, I think if it were me, I might actually take it with the pawn. But he takes it with the bishop. Again, I'm not sure. I guess, well, 
it, this pawn is now protected. So Gary missed his chance in grabbing that pawn. Okay. So let's try to talk a little less. And Gary takes a pawn. Sandler takes back with the pawn. I think Gary gets ready to castle. Chandler does castle. Kingside. Gary moves out his other bishop. But he doesn't castle. Um, now Chandler moves his knight to this side. <clears throat> I wonder what the purpose of that was. Maybe to attack the queen later? Yeah, I mean, uh, Kasparov probably saw uh, uh, the knight moving to here as an attack on the queen, so he moved his queen first. Chandler pulls out his queen, attacking this pawn. Now, I think I could uh, probably... Yes, so uh, Gar um, Chandler moves out his queen, attacking that pawn. Gary Kasparov castles queenside. See, I, I, I'll never fully appreciate these subtle moves. Uh, Chandler goes ahead and moves his rook behind his bishop. Um, I mean, if we, if we remember the uh, chess academy... Um, Josh Waitzkins talks about putting rooks on open files or files that would be otherwise open, attacking the queen if you to move that knight, basically. There's a subtle move Gary makes. I'm not sure why. Is it? I guess it's to to prevent any pinning of the queen. See, that's. I think that's one of my weaknesses. I think. I think why I'm not as good as I should be is because I don't foresee these subtle moves that I should be moving early and I usually make them too late well that's interesting okay so let's continue here Chandler piles up Gary Kasparov answers with a pile up <clears throat> now Chandler moves that pawn what is the reason for that Again, um, if any of you out there consider yourselves more of an expert than myself, give me a, give me a comment as, as to maybe tell me why you think that he might have done that. Kasparov wants that pawn out of there for some reason. This is where Kasparov starts to make an attack. Now, here's the move that I was waiting for. You see this queen move here? I went through this game a couple of times trying to think like a grandmaster. And I wondered why would Chandler move this queen here? And I think, I, again, I, there's no commentary in this uh, PG, PGN file. I think it might be that if, if Chandler left his queen here, it could become trapped, maybe with a knight move, you know, and, and maybe Chandler sees that, being the grandmaster that he is, obviously, and gets ready to get his queen out of danger. Okay, and or, or right away, Kasparov attacks it again. And Chandler is able to retreat back to the, uh, um, you know, his, his uh, hometown here. <clears throat> Now, why would Gary move that pawn? I don't know. Now, see, Gary is coming up with his pawns, maybe attacking the knight. Chandler sees that. Okay, so now, why would Gary do this? He's almost asking to be taken. But then again, it is protected by the queen. 
Now that's an interesting move. See, now, I wouldn't have done that. Gary Kasparov takes the bishop, giving up the exchange. I think this was a mistake for Gary. I mean, he did lose the game. So Gary decides to take the, the bishop, giving up his rook, you know, giving up a more powerful piece. They call that losing the exchange. So why would Gary do that? Maybe that was his mistake. I see Gary is um, making an attempt at attacking this. Perhaps, I don't know, let me I'll go ahead and give you an arrow here. Is it possible that that's what he's after? Chandler moves the knight. Uh, being protected by this pawn and by the rook. It's safe there. It's a good spot. It's got uh, control over a lot of the board. For example, here and here. And you could even, well, of course, that would be a bad mistake because the, uh, the bishop is there. But, but essentially he has you know, a good position. And the, um, that pawn is being attacked twice. Okay, let's continue. Now, why does Gary do that? To protect that pawn, maybe? I don't know. Just don't know. I still think that Gary made a mistake in, in losing the exchange. Now here's a weird one. Maybe Gary's just not playing a good game today. <laughs> I mean, why... Oh, I, I see. Okay. I, maybe his idea is somewhat simple. Maybe his idea is that uh, Chandler is going to take the bishop and uh, Gary's going to come over here and fork his queen and his king. But, uh, I mean, Chandler is not dumb. He does not take the bishop. So that's interesting. In other words, I, I think Gary's maybe not be playing uh, his best on this day back in 1976 because Chandler is obviously doing very uh, calculative here. Chandler knows that he can't take that bishop because as soon as you take that bishop, this is what's going to happen. Forking the... Okay, so Chandler knows that that would be a mistake. So why did Gary Kasparov try? Well, how old was Gary back in 1976? Uh, I, I think Gary was probably very young. And this may be his, uh, some of his older game. I mean, obviously it's 1976, so. Okay, so let's continue. Chandler attacks Gary's queen. Gary retreats. Chandler attacks pawn and it's being attacked twice with the bishop and with the knight it's only being protected once and I'll show you that and it's only being protected once <clears throat> okay so Gary decides he's going to take that knight in exchange for the bishop. Okay. Now, 
Gary comes in for the attack. But is this going to work? It looks like it's going to work. But is Gary in trouble here? You know, I'm, I'm no grandmaster, but I, I can... I can see where where there's a threat here. And now Chandler takes the, the bishop. Gary takes back with the pawn. Is this going to work? No. Chandler takes the queen, uh, king out of the way. Gary comes in with the rook. It looks dangerous for, for, for Chandler, doesn't it? But Chandler comes up with the queen. What does Gary do? Okay, Gary sees there's a threat on that pawn and decides to, to move the rook to protect it. Chandler takes the knight. I, I think Gary's just not playing well here. i got to find out how old Gary was at, at, in 1976. This might be one of his first teenage games. Is, was he a teenager in this at 76? Let me say, I was a teenager in 76. Gary's not much older. Than, in fact, I think Gary's younger than I am. I'm 54. How old is Gary Kasparov? Okay. Now this looks dangerous for Chandler. Gary Kasparov pulls the queen up, and it's it's uh, it's a it's a mating threat. That's certainly a mate threat. So Chandler has to find a way not to get mated. And of course, discovered check. So, as you can see, Gary has to get out of check, of course. Regardless of this uh, imposing mate threat here, Chandler kept his cool and said well check so um, Gary gets out of check of course and the pawn goes up check Gary's rook comes over takes the pawn but there's no longer a mate threat here because there's well yes there is actually yes there is it's still a mate threat because of the pawn let me just draw that line for you Okay. So what does Chandler do now? Easy cheesy, huh? Threatens the queen. Gary moves the queen out of the way. Chandler puts Kasparov in check. And this is suddenly what was looking good for Gary Kasparov was suddenly looking bad for him now and it's essentially game over because uh, there's nothing left Gary gets out of check I guess he must have resigned here because um, really really I mean I guess what the next move would be for Chandler um, he could, I suppose he could take the rook to, in, in, to, to remove that danger. But in any case, there it is. Gary Kasparov loses to uh, somebody named Chandler back in 1976. So somebody comment or message me or tell me how old was Gary Kasparov in 1976. <laughs> and uh, I hope you enjoyed this little impromptu analyzing of Gary Kasparov's games and uh, don't forget keep on playing so let's see if I can get this thing to stop without you seeing let me see here we go